Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Steven Brown, and in today's video, guys, let's talk about Frederick Anderson. And I want to reinforce something that I stated in all my videos when talking about Frederick Anderson. It was never personal. I just wanted the Maple Leafs to be able to afford to make the upgrades that they wanted to and needed to um, to this team. But that's all over and done with. And analyzing Anderson's numbers anymore would just be bullying at this point. They found a way around his $5 million cap hit to make the upgrades that were necessary and to make the upgrades that they wanted to to this team. They worked on the Nick Foligno deal for over a month. They wanted Ben Hutton the previous trade deadline. They gave Rasmus Sandin their full vote of confidence by calling him up and not acquiring another defenseman. And full marks to them for doing that because I don't think there was a defenseman on the market who would have been as impactful as Rasmus Sandin has been in the few games that he's played. It's looking really, really promising. Riley Nash, one of the better fourth line shutdown centers in the entire NHL. The Maple Leafs needed more center depth. They went out there and they got another center to share up the bottom six. David Riddick, I mean, he's a body. He's an NHL capable goalie. Rather have him than not. Um, you gotta hope that if you're the Leafs, you catch him on a good day. And if you're the other team, you gotta hope that you catch him on a bad day. And he seems to vary a lot between that. That's why he's got the reputation for being Big Save Dave, but also being able to turn in performances like we saw against the Vancouver Canucks the other night. But enough stalling. Let's talk about how the Maple Leafs can afford to activate Frederick Anderson off of LTIR. So you have your $81.5 million cap ceiling. And when you place the player on LTIR, you don't subtract from this total. You add to this total. So Cap Friendly is showing the Maple Leafs of having an LTIR pool of $8.45 million at the absolute most. So in order to determine how much relief they have right now, we need to take that $81.5 million number, the upper limit of the salary cap, and add $8450 million to it. And that is the Maple Leafs' new salary cap number that they can operate on as long as those players stay on LTIR. They still count. It's not free cap space. That's why we're adding and not subtracting. But if Frederick Anderson is going to be activated, then we need to remove his $5 million from the relief pool. So now we need to subtract that, their internal number with those players on LTIR by 5 million. And now that is the number that they have to work with. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of a discrepancy between this number here and today's cap hit. So how can the Maple Leafs bridge that gap? And I want you guys to focus on this number here. We need to get this number below or at this number. Or we need to increase this number. And that's where scenario one would play out. And that's by putting both Zach Hyman and Zach Bogosian on LTIR. And in doing so, that upper limit would increase back up to $88.2 million. So now we need to get this number at or under this one. So after removing the unnecessary players or the players that you can at least pass through waivers um, without other teams being able to claim them, I'm able to get this number close. It's close, right? But we're about $293,000 short. So currently, there's no possible way for the Toronto Maple Leafs to fit Rasmus Sandin and Frederick Anderson in the lineup for any of the remaining eight games. Unless, unless the Maple Leafs take advantage of this little tidbit of very confusing information. So the Maple Leafs can retroactively place someone on LTIR who did not play in this game against the Winnipeg Jets because that would have been the... 10th last game of the season for the Leafs. And the only player that fits that description is Ben Hutton. He hasn't played for the team since getting acquired in a trade. And I know that some of you want to see Ben Hutton play because some of you really believe in him. And so do the Maple Leafs. They wanted to acquire him last year at last year's trade deadline. Already pointed that out in this video. But I think that Ben Hutton, especially if he's willing to re-sign for the amount of money that he's currently making, is a candidate for the Maple Leafs to re-sign in the offseason and bring him back next year and see what he has next year. And of course, if there's injuries, he's going to play in the playoffs where the salary cap does not matter. So they can retroactively place him on LTIR back to that date and have them available to them 
in the playoffs. And they can say that he sustained an injury outside of a game. So in practice or just in his everyday life, you know, sometimes you're walking up the stairs and you just pull something. Yeah, you sleep on something and it feels funny. So by placing him on LTIR retroactive to that date, that bumps up that number that we were talking about again, and that gets us under that total. Look at that. We did it. There's one scenario where the Toronto Maple Leafs could activate Freddie Anderson off of LTIR. Or they can send Rasmus Sandin down, but I don't see that happening as they've stated they want him to play in all the remaining games. Isn't all this salary cap stuff just so fun and exhilarating to talk about? Trust me, I don't like it any more than you do, but I do like knowing how and why. So that's why we're doing this. That's why that's this that's why the channel exists in the first place. Because I'm curious and I got a big mouth. And if you're worried about Nash, Bogosian, or Hyman's conditioning, they can place them on LTIR conditioning stints and have them get their legs back that way. It's easier for skaters to do that in the American Hockey League to come back up and be ready to play in the NHL than it would be for a goalie. Now, option two. Option two is fun because it involves the Toronto Maple Leafs telling the NHL where to go. And forgive me, your name escapes me at the moment. Someone pointed this out in my comment section like a month and a half ago, and I mentioned it briefly in a video, but Puckpedia covering it here. With the season being extended from May 8th to 11th, sources tell at Pugpedia that season days for cap purposes likely to remain at the original 116 days. Players called up after day 116 paid current 1 1 16th per day. While final cap ends May 8th, day 116, NHL likely to impose call-up restrictions May 9th to the 11th. And that's important because the original proposed end date to the season was May the 8th. And now the Toronto Maple Leafs have two games after May the 8th. What kind of Mickey Mouse League tells a team that they need to budget for a very specific 116-day window? And this doesn't just go for the Maple Leafs. This goes for every team. How do you tell a team to budget for a very specific 116-day window and then with about a month's notice say, oh yeah, we're going to add days to that? It's like, no, no. We've been preparing for 116 days for almost six months now, and we've been doing stuff every single day to make sure that we're prepared up until that May 8th date. You can't add days to that. The salary cap after May 8th does not apply, even if there are games scheduled after May the 8th. The Maple Leafs should be able to play these two games with whoever the hell they want in the lineup. They should be able to sign Brendan Shanahan for a day, pay him $10 million, and have him... Uh, lace up, I don't know what equipment he used to wear back in the day. I don't know, did he wear Jofa? I don't know. Throw on some retro equipment and go down there and absolutely staple people to the boards because I bet you he can still do that. If the league is going to enforce these strict rules um, for after May the 11th, you might as well just abolish the salary cap. And if any of you follow or have the tweet notifications turned on for Leafs PR, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know all the hoops that the Maple Leafs have to jump through to manage their salary cap on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can't tell them that all those moves have been meaningless because you want to extend the season by a couple of days and just be a uh, giant asses, basically. And I'm sure I'm just repeating myself at this point, but the least are not going to be the only team that are going to have a problem with this. And the teams that don't have a problem with it are teams with bad GMs because they're the ones that aren't doing um, the day-to-day -day shenanigans that the Leafs do. Or they just have nothing to gain from it. Like, they're so far out of playoff contention and they have salary cap space anyway. But until Frederick Anderson is ready to go, the Leafs can just continue on doing what they're doing. But when Frederick Anderson does come back, um, scenario one, I think, kicks into place. They place Hyman and Bogosian on LTIR retroactive to that date, as well as Ben Hutton to keep Rasmus Sandin in the lineup. Anderson gets a couple of games in, and then those last two games of the season, um, the Maple Leafs make that protest. They make that argument. They win because the NHL is dumb and has no case, and the Leafs are able to play with their full playoff lineup for those two games. Whether Anderson is in the net or not doesn't matter. The point is, is that he'll be active on the roster, and so will all the other players. And just to touch on it really quickly, I think that Frederick Anderson deserves a couple of games before the end of the regular season to show what type of goalie he is. If he plays really well and he's insanely hot, we know that we got someone behind Jack if he falters. But in saying that, Jack Campbell is your starter round one game, one of the playoffs. 
I don't think there is anything that Frederick Anderson can do, barring him posting uh, multiple consecutive shutouts, that would change that. But it would be nice to know that after all this time, if Frederick Anderson is healthy and able to contribute to this team if they need him to, um, because that, that, would, that would take a lot of weight off of our shoulders. And also, I asked the question of you guys at the end of my previous video, um, Riley Nash, when he's healthy, is going to be in the lineup. He's one of the better um, third, fourth line defensive centermen in the entire NHL. Um, he's not sitting on the bench. So out of the forwards here, who's coming out of the lineup for him? I will leave you with that question again to end off this video. Make sure to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, we're still living game by game and the Leafs haven't played in a couple of days, but their last two games, awesome. So right now, everything's awesome.